How's it going guys and welcome to week one Wednesday or as we like to call it Wow <laughs> Today we are going to be looking at work knives We're gonna be looking at knives that you would take in a trade knives that you might want to work with outside just hardcore big knives well, they're not all big, but they're all good. <laughs> yep, definitely. Before we jump in, we want to give a huge shout out to Wee Knives. They are the reason that Week 1 Wednesday happens. So huge shout out to Wee Knives. And uh, if you guys haven't checked out their stuff, check it out. They make some great stuff. If you don't know why them sponsoring this is important, hold on to the end. I promise you're not going to be disappointed. Now, like with every wow, we're going to kick it off with a couple new arrivals while you guys get into this live stream. And then uh, we'll jump into the meat and potatoes of this thing. So. For new arrivals, uh, we have got the new one from Giant Mouse. This is the Giant Mouse Clyde. So you get an LMAX blade, you get G10 handles, these really cool um, accents. And then of course, like with every beautiful Giant Mouse, you get that beautiful, beautiful wire clip, uh, pocket clip. And uh, you know, it's just everything you'd expect from Giant Mouse. Right. right. It feels great. It's made of a premium steel and it's only going for 154 bucks with that LMAX. I would own this knife mm -hmm. if just one thing was different. What's that? If it was a drop point. Oh, drop point, okay. Just to, just, yeah. Or flat out, I don't know. The yeah. Persian swoop is just not for me. So funny story, we actually have a giant mouse working knife on the table, so we'll take a look at that. We'll check it out. <laughs> but yeah, so that goes for 154 on the website, and it also comes in a beautiful micarta, but I figured, change it up a little bit, show you guys the G10 version. All right, guys, we have a HOM designed Chimera Balasong. Now this is cool because the latch actually disappears. Well, partially disappears. And it, it's actually pretty sweet as far as uh, getting it out of the way. Oh yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a great innovation from uh, HOM. And again, USA made, super premium, everything you expect with a HOM. Titanium. It's yep. got these really cool blue G10 uh, liners accents, on the liners, mm -hmm. and it comes in a few different colors. Anyway, these are on the website for four hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, so it's definitely a premium valley, but you are for sure getting what you paid for with these homes. So absolutely, really, really awesome. They're buttery. All right. Um, next up, we have got the Kershaw Launch Four. You might notice it looks a little different. Uh, mm. This is a Blade HQ exclusive. It just launched. We've got blue blades, we've got red blades. Um, and it's just, you know, great little launch forward. Made in the United States, super awesome uh, action, super awesome warranty, and uh, you know, probably California legal. We're not lawyers, we don't give advice, but <laughs> probably California legal. And uh, this one, because it is a Blade HQ exclusive and you are getting a specially coated blade, goes for $89.95 on the website. If you want the red one, kind of like the Kalashnikov that we did, we also have one of those same price on the website. It's true. Still, still not my cup of tea. Yeah, but it's yeah, a great it, knife. You know, Kurt doesn't love it. I'm a big fan. I got the Desert Warrior one. It's great. You guys are gonna be excited about this next one. Okay. <laughs> now this is the Jumbo Roll. For reals, <laughs> the guys. For reals, guys, though. This is for reals the Jumbo Roll. So for April Fools, we did a video. It was a ton of fun. We did the Jumbo Roll video. Uh, now it's real. So we actually made it. Right. We have a bunch of these on the website, four reelsies right now on the website. So we have these hooks that can go over your door and hold it, it drops all the way down, just shy of the floor. This thing, normally the our other knife roll has this many rows. Yeah, like 12, yeah, 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 12 knives. But this has 40. <laughs> hit the microphone. Oh no! <laughs> Jamie, Guys, don't tell anyone. Jamie is gonna fire Kurt. This is what happens when you do it live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, the Jumbo Roll has 40 different sections for your knife collection, and man. It's real. It's legit. Okay, so a couple things. So we did an April Fool's video. It was an April Fool's video, nothing was real. Uh, so this goes for $30 on the website, which I think is pretty sweet to get all those, those, those knives in one spot. And it doesn't roll roll. So if you put all your knives in this thing and then try to roll it up, it's not gonna roll up perfectly, um, but you could fold it up and still transport your knives. So anyways, kind of a fun thing. Just throw it down. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna You already that. broke the microphone. I mean, who it's cares now? <laughs> it's true, I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm guys. Sorry. Um, so uh, <laughs> if you guys are just joining us, this is Week One Wednesday. This is our live show that we do every Wednesday. This is a show for you guys, by you guys. And today we are looking at working knives. Now. 
We know a little bit about working. Uh, you know, currently we sit behind a desk, a knife bender, and we uh, we sit behind a desk here at HQ. Uh, but I'm a journeyman carpenter. I'm a journeyman concrete specialist. I've done everything else in between. As a grease monkey for a while, landscaping, all that stuff. Kurt's been a mason. He's been a landscaper. Same thing. Kind of done everything in the middle. So we picked knives that we thought would be a good fit. And then we also took a ton of suggestions from you guys on what knives you guys are using in your trades. So what you guys are using for actual work knives. You know what? Uh, working in the industries, the different industries, is actually what gave me my ham hands. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And that's where the ham hands came from. The ham hands. All right, so first knife on the table. We cannot even begin to talk about the subject without talking about cold steel. So this is the Cold Steel Recon 1. You get an S35 VN blade, G10 handles, two-way reversible pocket clip, and then of course that super strong um, triad lock that Cold Steel is so well known for. So. I've never carried a cold steel as a working knife. Um, to be honest, when I was doing a lot of the construction that I was doing, I only carried one or two knives with me for the most part because I found what worked and I liked it. We'll look right. at those a little bit later. Um, but the recon came up time and time again in your guys' comments. Um, Thomas Denton on YouTube was one of the guys that shouted this one out and said that he uses this one, he wanted to see it on the table. So there's the recon one. You know what? If I could if I could actuate the triad lock really well, I'd yeah. probably carry one. Yeah, we're not gonna do it right now because you already broke the <clears> microphone. <throat> That's but true. <laughs> Kurt has a hard time with the triad lock for some reason. Gosh, uh, but just... the Recon 1 is a, is a great option for a working knife. All right, guys, I have this little Gerber. It's called the Exchanger Blade or the EAB. Basically, it is a very simplified uh, swappable razor knife. Has a liner lock deep carry pocket clip. I have actually personally used one of these um, before I worked here. Uh, it was like a box cutter or like if I'm mm -hmm. cutting sheetrock or something. And the reason being, you can just swap out the blade. Yeah. Right. These, these, uh, this style of knife is such a great knife for, for anybody who's doing work out there, um, any type of work that you're doing. Right. Uh, because you can just replace that blade when it does go dull, specifically cutting, you know, backing board or cutting sheetrock or anything like right. that. Right. When you're going through that much blade mm -hmm. i mean you're tearing them up this yeah. is a great option and 12 dollars on the website 12 dollars. you can't beat that me? yeah that's great i actually used to travel with one of those when i was building gun ranges oh, yeah. so i built gun ranges all over the united states and uh you know obviously you can't take a knife you know to air airports and stuff right. like that so i would just pick up something like this when i'd get to a new place and i'd have an exchangeable blade just and put still have my pocket in. knife nice yeah exactly that's cool now if you're a knife guy i haven't ran into a lot of knife guys in in the construction world but if you're a knife guy and you want something like that Gerber, but knife appropriate. <laughs> you go with the uh, Manix 2 with the, um, this has got the Maximit blade steel on it. Now, um, this is a lightweight. So I heard from a lot of you guys that you wanted to see the Manix 2. A lot of you guys are using the Manix 2 with the Maximit blade steel. Um, this is the lightweight. I know makes some of you guys may be like, oh, it's not really for hard use. So, you know, I don't, I disagree. I beat the crap out of my bug out and it keeps coming back for more. <laughs> but this has got the uh, the Spyderco, uh, this is the ball bearing lock on it, right? Is that the right word? I think so. Yeah, 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 ball bearing lock. So this has got the, the Spyderco ball bearing lock, so it's got the nice one-handed open and close, and then the Maximate steel. Now the nice thing with the Maximate steel is it's not really great for prying or anything like that. You shouldn't be prying with your pocket knives either way. But the great thing with Maximate is you don't have to sharpen it very often. So if you're processing a lot of boxes or anything like that, and that's what I heard from a lot of you guys out there, if you're doing receiving, shipping, anything like that, this Maximate will just cut for days before you ever hmm. have to sharpen it again. That's interesting. I don't have a knife with Yeah, I don't, I've, I've never owned Maximate either, but it's something that I heard from a lot of you guys out there. Um, and that goes for 188.50 on the website. Um, it's pretty sweet. You know, and it actually brings up kind of an interesting uh, point. I'm gonna pull this up here really quick, guys. Uh, I had to save this. It was a comment on YouTube about what a working knife is. And it's from uh, Jammer Montana. And he said, criteria for a working knife should be cheap but durable, sharp but easily resharpened, great ergonomics for lots of use and decent thickness and length. Uh, One-handed opening and closing is important but not essential. And then he likes ones that goes on his belt because you're usually wearing a belt, you know, and you can put more tools in your pockets. I think that is a great definition. It's a pretty for, solid one. For a working knife. Now, Maximit, not very easy to sharpen, but it's going to last you a long time. That's, right. you know, that's the advantage to it. Okay, next up on the table is the Kershaw Blur. It's a Ken Onion design. It's got the speed assist opening. Um, this is Track Tech. I didn't even have to look at my paper, guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kurt always forgets that it's Track Tech. <laughs> I always forget. I'm always like Track Tack or Tack Track. Yeah. 
Track Tech. Track Tech. Track Tech, um, along with these aluminum scales, it's pretty darn sweet. Yeah, you can go tip up or tip down. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it goes for 60, 63 bucks. $63. And this is another knife that we heard a ton of you guys are carrying uh, kind of day to day at work is this blur. Right, and the blade length, I was looking that up, it's, it's right around three and a half, just shy of three and a half inches. Yeah. So this thing is sweet, a ton of people use it. I really, really love this knife, but I'll tell you why I don't own one. Okay, why is that? These are a little aggressive, the uh, oh, thumb little, stud. A little sharp? Yeah, a little sharp. Mm. And if you guys put a deep carry pocket clip on this, be about perfect. Be money. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, I think you just awesome. I just think you just haven't been a mason long enough. Your hands are getting a little soft there, buddy. They are. <laughs> they are. I haven't grabbed brick in a long time. Made nice. mortar. $63. Oh, and uh Hank's account. Hank's like account. On on Instagram. He's a firefighter. He wanted to check that one out. Yeah, he so. says he carries the blur every day as a firefighter. So that's awesome. That's a pretty big endorsement. Huge. Endorsement. I mean, he's probably trusting his life on that thing. Absolutely. All right. So next up we have the Gerber 06 Auto. Now I chose the Tanto with the uh, serrations because when we're talking work knives, right, and especially with the 06 Auto, uh, the Tanto blade is notorious for being just a, a workhorse of a blade shape. And then with the serrations, like Honestly, like if you're in a place where you can't sharpen your knife all the time, you're not good at sharpening your knife, serrations stay sharper longer. Like it's just a fact, it's what they do. Um, but with the 06 Auto, you're getting S30V blade, you're getting the G10 handles, um, uh, you know, super snappy with the uh, two-way reversible pocket clip, made in the USA, um, just great. You know, yeah. and we're talking working knives, we're talking a knife that you wanna trust every single day, you know you're not gonna have to mess with or that's gonna break on you. This knife has probably been deployed uh, with men and women overseas, probably more than any other knife in like the last 10 years. Like this knife is just a workhorse. It would be interesting to see the actual numbers. Yeah, the actual numbers, That'd be cool. yeah, exactly. But when you're sending a knife out to the sandbox and these men and women are using it every day in life, life or death situations, it's probably gonna work for you if you're a carpenter. It's probably gonna work for you if you, you know, you're a tile guy or something like that. It's gonna treat you all right. It's gonna have. It's gonna be just yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly. Those, um, those bags of lime cutting into that yeah. for no, all those hot tenders out there. No problem. No problem. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, and that goes for 179.99 on the website. Now, th this brings up this, 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 these couple knives here. That brings up an important point with working knives is. And this is true too with tactical knives. If you guys watched the video that we did with Neil from Ready Gunner with tactical knives, most guys I knew in the construction industry, actually everybody I knew in the construction industry, did they wouldn't have been able to tell you what knife they were carrying. They're rare. Like, rare. Super rare. rare. And the ones the ones that did, they'd be like, oh, it's a cricket, the CRKT. <laughs> I called CRKT cricket before I knew as well. But they're like, oh, it's a cricket or oh, whatever. And they're just picking up knives wherever. Right. So the reality is, is to drop 180 bucks on a knife, it's, you know, it's money. That's definitely real yeah. money, but it's also about investing in your tools. Right. You know? Absolutely. Investing in your tools. Think of this guy as a tool. Look at this. <laughs> this is the CRKT Compact Razel. Um, I think they used to make a full size or... Yeah, so they... It's kind of in the air. Yeah, they've made a full size. I don't know if it's discontinued, but this thing is such a utilitarian blade. Even in the compact package, which maybe it's a secondary knife or, again, maybe for processing boxes a lot or whatever, um, it's still so dang useful. I personally... This one has G10 scales on top of the uh, regular scales. Like the stainless, yeah. Yeah, but... Um, I think without those, it'd be perfect. It's Make it got, a little less thick. It has a sharpened chisel tip, mm -hmm. and that would be awesome for any kind of scraping. Also, what we were talking about earlier is like the uh, replaceable razor blade knives, this thing, if you hold it and you really wanted to get that fine detail cutting work, that yep. 90 degree angle is really gonna come in handy. Yep. And it's cool, man. Deep carry pocket clip, uh, frame lock, it's it's pretty sweet. It's just a great little user. And what's it go for? Uh, twenty six dollars on the website. Twenty six bucks. You can't go wrong. For yeah, and that's the thing bucks. is when we're talking. There's your cricket, right? <laughs> like, yeah, there's if your. You, cricket. If you're a working man and you don't know what knives are, there's your cricket. Yeah. Right? Um, all right. Cool. So next up, we have got the Benchmade Freak, or as uh, it's been called, the Super Freak. A lot of us here at Blade HQ drool over this knife. Um, Mark Brandt on Instagram, he wanted to, to see this one out here. I don't know, if, I can't remember if he said he used it or he wanted to see it, but either way, uh, here it is, buddy. Um, so this has got uh, G10 handles, two-ray reversible pocket clip, 
that sweet, sweet access lock, and then M4 steel. Oof. Now with M4 steel, we love we <sighs> love M4 steel here at Blade HQ. Yeah, exactly. We love M4 here at Blade HQ. Um, my M4 Pair Three is one of my favorite knives. Um, and talking about work knives, like that thing's right. a workhorse. Uh, M4 retains edge really for a really long time. It's just a great working blade. The one thing that I love that they did with this is they coated it because M4 is a higher carbon content, so it has a tendency right. to rust a little bit easier. Right. And so for me personally, if I was going to take this out into the field. I don't want to have to like clean the rust off my blade or worry about it rusting or whatever. So a coated blade, I think, is the way to go. I just see that thing and I, man, it's so beautiful. Do yeah. I want to use it as a tool, <laughs> right? <laughs> or do I just want to use it as pocket? And that's jewelry? that's the other consideration. When when uh, when I was when I was a carpenter, that's when I bought my first like bench made, right? Right. Nope, that was my dress knife. That did not go to work with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but this thing was designed to work. Um, so it's it's got a, it's got a really good purchase, really big handle. Um, you know, this is probably a medium to large size knife, and uh, it's great all the way can around. I, can I see it? Yeah, you can see it. Kurt's, wanna... Kurt's been drooling on this thing a lot, guys. The hams, the hams, the hams. Man, <laughs> just swap that for a deep carry. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> so uh, good. That one might be on my near to purchase list. <laughs> we might have just had a crow moment, is what you're telling yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that goes for one ninety one twenty five on the website, guys. All right, up next over here we've got the CVV mm. CVV Elementum, and this thing is sweet. We. We've been talking about it, and I don't. We're get, and we're going to keep talking about I'm, it. I'm telling you, this knife is the most simplistic. Yeah. Probably one of the best bangs for your buck knife out right now. Out. Yeah. Like available. Yeah. D2 blade, G10 yep. handle, like ugh. D2, G10, deep carry pocket clip. You got that Civivi action, butter, blade centering. Yep. All the things, all the good things that you want with a knife. There it this is. This knife has it, and it's fifty dollars. Yeah. If you didn't hear me, it's, <laughs> it's fifty fifty dollars. <laughs> Go buy one. And here's the thing: is again, you're talking you're talking about a knife that like it's okay if you lose or it's okay if you break or whatever, but that's still gonna get the job done, right? right? Boom. Absolutely. There you go. And and not just that, but like any of the offerings from Civivi, uh, or not any, because they got just like with Wii knives, because Civivi's owned by Wii. Just like with some of the Wii knives, not all of them are great workers, right? right? But that one, hands down, great work, a great EDC knife. You and can dress it up, gentleman's knife, whatever. Yeah, I like it. It's slim. Yeah. It's beautiful. Now, it's classic. You guys you guys have really been digging this knife, and so have we. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, check out Taylor from Best Damn EDC. He's got, he's got a video about like some budget carries he's doing. Um, he's carrying the Civivi. It's going to win. It's obvious it's going to win. Um, <laughs> but check that out. But anyways, a lot of people have been crushing on this knife. So right now, I think on the website, they might be out of stock. But don't worry. We've talked with Civivi, and we are going to get a million more so everybody can own one because everybody should. <laughs> now, on, on the note of Civivi, um, they do make bigger knives. So this is the Civivi Praxis. It goes for 42 43 bucks on the website. Um, and, you know, it's just got a 9CR blade, G10 handles, uh, two-way reverse bowl, deep carry pocket clip. But again, it's just a nice, big working knife. Now, the Praxis is one of the earlier models of Civivi. Right. And uh, you guys have heard us say it before. Not a big fan of the colored liners. Maybe some of you guys are. That's rad. Um, it doesn't affect the performance of the knife by any means. Um, right. Just personally not a fan of the liner color. But they do make them in a bigger size too. So if you're looking for something for a gloved hand or a bigger hand, boom. 43 I feel bucks. like that and the boost are right around the same size. Yeah, right around the same really size. Really fill your hand and you've got a lot of blade. Yeah. All right, guys. We have some of your favorite knife. The ZT0223. 0223. Two, two, Guys, this thing is awesome. Wait, I gotta, we gotta pause on this one. Okay, we have 0566s. I heard a lot of 0566s out there. We have 0566s, they're on sale on the website. They're like 130 bucks, 125 bucks, something like that. I picked this one, okay? Because every time we post this on Instagram, there's a lot of hate comes out. And you know what I mean? Like we posted it right. at Blade Show and people were like, I don't like it, it looks like a gas station knife. Here's the thing. Now I was raised in truck stops because my grandpa was a truck driver. <laughs> So maybe I'm biased, but I don't think it looks like a truck stop knife. And on top of that, ZT is known for being hardcore working knives. And so many of their knives now are titanium and carbon fiber, which is great. It's fine. But for me, I want some G10. And that's why I love this thing. Because it's got G10. It, it's pretty sweet. And that 20 CV blade. So anyways. 20 CV. Let me know in the comments, guys. How do you guys feel about this knife? <laughs> Be honest, guys. Be honest. And let's also 
see if we can get any awesome comments. Whoever else was raised by truck drivers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm curious. All right, guys. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much talked about it. Titanium, G10, 20 CV, coated blade, um, reversible pocket clip. Yeah. And just everything you expect with ZT. Made ZT, America, great warranty. Great action. And it's meant to be beat up. It's an expensive knife for sure. Especially if you're talking about a working man, like this is an expensive knife, but this is a tool you can trust. Right, absolutely. You know? That's a good one. And it goes for $300. So we're talking about investing in a tool. Yep. This is one of those that might be a little bit of an investment. And this is the thing is as a carpenter, right? I use a lot of uh, Milwaukee. I use a lot of um, rigid and, and things like that for table saws, compound saws, stuff like that. Um, but I, I wouldn't ever use like something from Lowe's, right? Like I'm not a big fan of like the Lowe's brands and stuff, yeah. uh, the, the less expensive. I can't even think of the names like Ryobi, not a fan of Ryobi, right? Like I'm not a fan of the blue one, whatever the blue one is. <laughs> I don't even know the names because I just avoid them. And I, and I think the same thing goes for what you're carrying in your pocket is it's, it's a matter of investments, a matter of uh, if, if you want something super quality that you can count on that has a good warranty, or if you want yeah. something that's just like, I'm gonna fall apart. Yeah, right? you, you get what you pay for. You really do, you really do, especially with tools. And that's what we're looking at today is, is we're not looking at pocket jewelry, we're looking at tools. Um, so speaking of tools and utilitarian, uh, you can't talk about work knives without talking about the M16. Uh, kind of heralding back to the Gerber 06 Auto, this knife has been um, you know, out with troops and everything for a long time. And a lot of guys that have served, this is the knife that they served with. Uh, so the M16 is a great knife. Um, you know, this one, uh, they come in different varying blade steels. They come in, in varying patterns. Um, this one goes for $45 on the website. And we even have some on sale for like 30 bucks on the website. Serious? Which is pretty sweet. And so, yeah, just a, it's a great beater knife that's going to get the job done. Um, awesome. I actually know a handful of electricians that carry M16s. Really? Yeah, and they love them because they're easy to sharpen and they can just beat them up and it doesn't matter. I that's mean, a bunch awesome. of them have like, you know, the tips missing and everything. Right. Eh, who cares, right? Yeah. Like it's, it doesn't break the bank. Right. Um, all right, guys. So now it is time for pocket check. So um, I've got a couple comments here popping up on the phone we're going to take a look at. We're going to see what's in our pockets and then we're going to see some of the knives you guys wanted to see on the table. So, Kurt, what do you got in your pockets today? <laughs> what's this face? <laughs> this silly thing. No, don't. No, 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 no. So guys, if you haven't watched Best Knives Under Three Inches, check it out. Uh, we convinced Kurt to carry a Victorinox for about a month or so, or for a month, for 30 days. He's gonna have it in his pocket, and uh, he picked the Super Tinker, based Super on tinker. your guys' votes and what he thought would work for him. Got the American flag one, as he should have. Now, you called it silly, but we were talking about it today, and he was like, oh, I've actually used it quite a bit, it's pretty handy. No. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Let's, He's just let's, being stubborn because you guys are here. That's okay. Okay. No, no, no. no, no listen. Reason. Listen to this. This is real. This is real talk right here. Yeah. The very first day I put this in my pocket. By the time I got home later that evening, yeah. I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. So I put this leather lanyard because and he, the bead on. He wants to have a pocket clip. Because I want right. a pocket clip. Right, right, and right, so right. now this can go in my pocket and this kind of hang out and I can grab it Pull this it way. Yeah. But when it's down deep in your pocket, that yeah. is the most annoying thing that, in the world. That is one thing that I had to get used to with the compact. See, the other mistake that he made, because I tried to talk to him about this, I think it's a little thick because he's usually wearing like basketball shorts when he's wearing pants. <laughs> it's rare. And but I think it I think I think it's a, it was a little thick for, for the type of pants that he likes to carry. But you have to admit, you, it has come in useful. You've used it a handful of times. You said you used the screwdriver a couple times, used the scissors a couple times. I have used the scissors. All right. <laughs> My wife was like, hey, do you have some scissors? I was like, wait a minute, I do. Oh, actually, I do. This is kind of weird. <laughs> All right, what else you got in your pocket? All right. <laughs> that one more, more on that later, guys. Don't worry, upcoming knife banner. When we're talking work knives, I had to bring in my workhorse. Mm -hmm. This is the Benchmade Mini Barrage with D2 a uh, steel deep carry pocket clip and it's been through the works if you guys have seen any of the previous videos where i talk about this it has been years in just some hard trench work yep and that's and uh yeah this is another knife that a lot of you guys said you use as a work knife every day is the is the barrage this is a mini barrage right mini this the, is the mini barrage the barrage and mini barrage popped up a lot with you guys this is the uh kurt's custom kurt's custom kurt's <laughs> custom it's All a right, good cool. one uh, we got a couple shout outs here. Uh, Timothy Benzinger, he said that, oh, this is awesome. He bought a mermaid for a six-year-old daughter and it's in a shadow box until she's 12. 
Yes! That's awesome, bro. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is amazing. Um, and then uh, Eric T13, he asked, what do we like best, the Guardian Tactical Recon and LMAX or the S35 VN blade? So I can't speak from experience because I don't own one. Um, honestly, I'd probably go LMAX just because it's LMAX. Why not, right? But what about what do you think? Uh, Guardian Tactical, mine is a 154CM. Yeah. And I kind of wish it would have been... Some, you know, little, 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 something a little, little more, more premium. Okay. But to be honest, I haven't had any problems. Oh. And that thing sharpens up like sharp. That's the beauty. Scary sharp. That's the beauty of 150 CM, especially right. compared to like an LMAX is it's easy right. to sharpen. Right. But LMAX is nice. No, so Yeah, LMAX is great. You know, that's kind of a tough choice. Um, and then pocket dump wise, we got Tony Hendrick. He's got an M. Oh, he says M16 is a good beater. He passed his on to his son. Nice. Rat, Generations. Um, e. Lewis has got an orange uh, Benchmade 51. Right on, dude. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Randy Sweet, he's got an old Protect TR3. Uh, he's going on shift right after this. So thanks for tuning in, buddy. Nice. <laughs> you guys should send in photos of your daily uh Yeah, we'd love to see them. I want to see, see those. All right, cool. Uh, so Sean's been running around for us, and our graphic designer, Sean's been running around pulling some knives you guys want to see on the table. Let's see what we cooked up. Dude, we got some good stuff today. Ooh, Here's that. We got some hot yes, stuff. Yes, I'm excited about that one. Nice. There we go. All right, Wonderful. Beauty. Buttes, yeah. Cool, you got, what are you carrying today? You know, some of you guys might know what I'm carrying because I've shown it a few times before. I only carry one knife ever. <laughs> All day, every day, bro. He loves the it Elko. though. It gets the job Ooh. done for you, right? Don't look at it too closely because I may have blunted the tip. Uh-oh. I don't want to talk about it, it's still kind of raw. <laughs> Kind of a sore point. Well, thanks for grabbing this knife, man. Yikes. You guys will enjoy these. Yeah, thanks. appreciate it. All right, I'm taking this one. <laughs> Fine. All right, guys. Um, I don't know who wanted to see these. So uh, you know who you are. You're watching. Yeah. Uh, so you this know. is the Microtech Ultratech Bounty Hunter. We just got a couple of these in. They're almost sold out. Please don't buy any because I want to buy one before <laughs> I leave today. So This is the Tonto with the uh, serrations. And uh, the, apparently the plane blade sold out already. Are you kidding me? Plane blade's gone. That's <laughs> the one I wanted. Dang uh, it. But anyways, just super cool knife. All the details here. You got this uh, Mandalorian symbol here. You got a rocket pack here. And then just sweet colors, distressed. It's great. You know, it's actually really good that you covered that knife because I wouldn't have been able to point out all those things. <laughs> so, but it is nice. sweet. And it goes for 315 on the website. Get one while you can. Okay. I'm giving that one back to you. Okay. This is the Kershaw Dividend. Ooh, it's got the uh, silicon the, pack. Yes, yeah, nice smeller. The smelly pack. Um, this thing is cool. It's got, uh, it's M390, let's see. isn't it? M390 Oof. steel. And uh, yeah, just it's, a, it's, it's a speed safe assisted, yeah. I think. Speed safe, made in the USA. Yep. And uh, you know, this actually falls in line with what we're talking about with great work knives. Uh, we actually have a link on the table. I was gonna say, which this is, is similar which to is a like, link. Yeah, the link is just a little bit beefier. So yeah. great choice, whoever chose that. All right, That's and awesome. then uh, finally we have the Steel Will Tasso. I've talked about this knife a handful of times. Guys, I have one, I really enjoy it. It's going for 170 bucks. What sets this apart from other knives is, I mean, you know, it's got uh, an M390 blade steel, which is great. It's got G10, which is great. Um, and then it's got this lock that looks a little bit like other locks you might've seen. But the difference is, is that it actually is a breakable back lock. Um, so it's a really, really strong Isn't lock. It, is it called the ant lock? The ant I can't lock. Remember. Yeah, yeah, the okay. ant lock, but it's all one handed. So anyways, if you haven't checked out Steel Wheel Ant Lock Tasso. That's cool. There it is, check it out, 170 on the website. All right, then finally, we'll do a quick pocket check of what I'm carrying today. Um, one of them I don't have on because I wanted you guys to see the case. So I have got my Leatherman Surge. Can we just have a moment of silence so everyone can take in that patina? And here's the thing, guys. This isn't actually from not taking care of it. This is the only reason it's lasted this long is because I have taken care of this case. I've just had it for a very long time. That's awesome. Um, so this is the Leatherman Surge. And when we're talking work knives, uh, kind of jumping into that subject, you can see there's still a little bit of concrete from a pour I did about a week or two ago. Um, but when you're talking work knives, uh, this is the knife that I would take with me on every single job site. Every single job I've ever done, I've taken this knife with me. And here's the thing, when it comes to construction, I'm a brand man. So Red Wing boots, Duluth pants, Carhartt shirts, and Leatherman Surge. And that's not to say that there's not another multi-tool that's right on par with the Surge. It's just, I found what worked, I found what didn't let me down, and I just stuck with it. And so this Leatherman Surge is absolutely incredible. Highly recommend it, this is my personal one, but this is uh, something I was carrying on me today. 
took it off the belt so you guys could see the, the sheath. It's she's, pretty cool. She's worthwhile. All right, That's and then cool. uh, I've got my Benchmade Outlast because we're showing off kind of our work knives. <laughs> so S30V blade, um, G10 handles, and then it's got a 3V serrated pry tip. You can see I might have used it once or twice, might have beat it up once or twice. This thing is incredible. If I was still in the trades, this is the knife I would carry with me every day. It's awesome. Um, and then if you're a first responder of some sort, it does have a glass breaker on the end, and then it does have a seatbelt cutter as well. Those are kind of ancillary for me. Uh, to be honest, the double blade system on the axis lock is really what sells me on it. So. That's cool. Um, oh, you know, guys, I got three knives on me today. I, I, have, I have a knife problem. I got I a knife problem. It. How are we going to talk what's in my pocket if I don't bring out my compact? So this is my Victorinox compact, and I will tell you right now that if I didn't think that Victorinox were for kids when I was working construction, hands down, this would have been in my pocket every day on the job site. Hands down. And we're going to talk a little bit about some in-pocket knives here in a minute, but I just, I don't know about it yet. Dude, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> All right, let's jump back in. Uh, we're gonna jump into a giant mouse. Um, oh wait, just one second. We got a comment from one of you guys out there. So knock around 511 said that he cut down 31 trees that were on average five inches in diameter with his Gerber flat iron. No way. <laughs> Buddy, I need to see pictures of that. That's incredible. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, so Gerber flat iron. There's another work knife for you. <laughs> Especially uh, if you're cutting down five inch trees. I love it. Um, I need to know how long that took. Five now. inches around. Yeah, around. Okay. All right, cool. So we're going to jump into the uh, Giant Mouse Nimbus. Now, we looked at the Clyde at the beginning for some new arrivals, but when we're talking work knives, this thing's M390 blade, G10 handles. It's got that sweet wire clip that you get from Giant Mouse. And then the thing that I love about this, it goes for about 175 on the website. Um, I feel like this has been kind of eclipsed by the Biblio. And the Biblio is wonderful. Like I carry my That's Micarta fair. Biblio all the time. Um, but when we're talking about work knives, this thing, this was designed to be a workhorse, right? Mm -hmm. Very utilitarian blade. And then the handle's really neutral. And the thing that, that I love about it is it just fills your hand up and you're, you just, it's just a really secure purchase. So I try like that it, out. I like it because uh, you get significant knife. Mm -hmm. It's workable. Yeah. You're like you can get on this thing. Yeah. And it's also still refined and kind yeah. of sleek. It's kind of nice looking. And at so. 175, again, I think for a lot of like, like if any of the guys that I've worked on cruise on are watching this right now, I'm sure a lot of them are like, you're crazy paying 175 for a knife. Right. But that's the thing is, as you learn about knives, you realize like, oh, actually like M390 is worth paying for. G10 is worth paying for. Like a company you can trust and a, and a, and a quality designer is worth paying for. Good um, warranty. Exactly. All the things. So, so really great knife from Giant Mouse. Uh, and you know, be great for gloves as well because right. it's got that bigger purchase. But. Okay, guys, I have over here a Hinderer XM18. Now this thing is sweet, 20 CV steel, G10 scales, um, a two-way reversible pocket clip. Um, this thing's pretty sweet. Liner lock. Yeah, I know. I know Hinderer Rick. He. Uh, he, he's kind of come from the trades, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Rick was a fireman. Uh, I'm pretty sure when I was talking to him, he told me he did some construction and stuff as well. Uh, he's a really hands-on guy, really nice guy. And he's, since day one, Hinderer Knives has been about designing knives to use them, right? Like that's the whole purpose of the Hinderer Knives. And uh, made in the USA, great warranty. And again, Rick's a really great guy. Um, but this this would definitely fall kind of on that higher end of the premium tools. What's the price on this thing? Uh, it goes for three seventy five. Three seventy five. So you're paying for premium yeah. materials. One qualm I have. Yeah. Is how sharp and pointy. The, yeah. Uh, but flip it open and then hold it. But you flip it open. Yeah. And look at that. I it just know. it Here, just locks you in, man. You get a really nice choil out of that flipper tab. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. I think Kurt's hands are just going soft. He needs to get, needs Seriously. To get in the break. <laughs> Seriously. Dude, next time I pour some concrete, you're coming. All okay. right. <laughs> Deal. Deal. So 375 on the site, guys. Rick Hinderer XM18. Yep. All right. And then uh, I've never handled this knife until today. Uh, this, was a, this was a suggestion from a lot of you guys out there. Um, Josh Dudes on Instagram, you were the first one I saw call it out. But there was a bunch of you guys that carry this. This is the K-Bar Dozier? Dozer? I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but Dozier or Dozer. Anyways, it goes for $19.95. It's got an Oz8 blade, um, just kind of uh, FRN scales. Not a huge fan of the pocket clip. Yeah, kind of looks 
Like it wouldn't last yeah, very long. That's the thing. But here's the thing. That's why I was talking about in pocket knives is pocket clips never lasted for me ever. So not really great there um, in general for pocket clips for me. Never had success, right. but it does have a back lock. Back lock is good. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a solid lock. Yeah, so super strong lock. And this thing's going for 20 bucks. And so I can see why a lot of you guys use this. 20 bucks, man. Yeah, great deal. Can't and then really go wrong. the other thing, like I said, it's just, it's really ergonomic. Right. Like it just fits your hand really, really well. I, I know a couple of people who really might like that color too. Ooh, yeah, this is a this is a color I've, I've heard about once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> All right, guys, I have over here a Boker Kalashnikov. If you don't know about the Boker Kalashnikov, I just want to smack you through the camera. What are you doing? What are you doing if you don't know about the Boker <laughs> no, Kalashnikov? No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> guys, these things are workhorses. It's an automatic. It's a plunge lock. Um, aluminum handles, deep carry clip. This is the dagger blade. That's the dagger blade. The dagger blade. And honestly, these things are beefy. Yeah. If you don't believe us, go back a few videos and watch our Kalashnikov video. And there were knives on there that had seen years yeah. of we, hammer. Just two of the stories, real quick, two of the stories. We had one guy who was laying sod with his. Um, it ended up getting buried under some sod. The next season he had like a dead patch in his grass and he's like, ah, and it cuts it out. And the Kalashnikov was underneath. He just blows it out real quick, fires like a champ. And then Timote, who's been on the channel a couple times, you guys saw his knife um, in that knife banner. And he has used it so much that like half the blade's gone. Yeah. Um, Cause he was in receiving for a long time. So he's opening boxes every day with it. And still to this day, that's what he uses. And this is, this is a guy who's got like custom one-off knives. Like I've seen oh, knives, yeah. like he's got stuff from like Benchmade, Chris Reeve that I've never seen anywhere else. Right, like first run. <laughs> yeah, like, and, uh, and he still takes that Kalashnikov out to, to receive boxes. So inexpensive, Easy to sharpen, super reliable. Awesome, awesome work, action, forty dollars. Yes, yeah, great, like, great work. That that's really what it comes down to. Awesome knife, forty dollars. Exactly. Um, speaking of awesome knives for not a lot of money, next up we have the Cold Steel Tough Light. So with the Tough Light, you're about thirty bucks. Um, you get a nice little cold steel. It's got a two-way um, pocket clip that is for uh, tip down carry. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah. For a tip down carry. Um, and this thing is just, you know, it's designed with the choil and everything just to go right in hand, thumb on jimping, and then to use that uh, Warren Cliff utility blade. And then it's a tiny little knife, but it packs a punch with that triad lock. And so all the way around, it's a workhorse. Um, and like I said, 30 bucks, triad lock, super utilitarian. Um, and we're talking about opening boxes. We're talking about processing bags of concrete or lime. Right. You know, if you're a hottie doing doing masonry work, um, great knife for all those things. I'm not crazy about the blade, but yeah. I totally understand it. Cause you just, don't, but you don't like Warncliffe blades in general. I don't, I don't like Warncliffe yeah. blades in general or sheep's foot or any of those, Yeah. but it does give you that really hard flat edge, just like a razor blade. Yep. And it's going to last you 15,000 times more. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's again, this one's an Oz 8, so super easy to sharpen. And then again, at 30 bucks, you're not breaking the bank. So right. even if you're looking to buy a gift for a buddy who's in the trades or whatever, you get him something like this, this is gonna be a huge step up from whatever gas station knife that he has. I know, I've done the gas station knife game. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> huge step up. <laughs> All right, guys. Up next, I have the Microtech L-U-D-T. Mm. Uh, what does L-U-D-T stand for? Large Underwater Detonation? Demolitions team? Demolitions There it team? is, not detonations, That's demolitions. Right. <laughs> okay guys, with this, you know exactly what you're getting with the Microtech. I mean, it snaps open, it's an amazing action. Um, premium materials, this is L-Max steel. Um, you have your pocket clip back there. I personally would think it would be amazing with a deep carry, but I'm a deep carry guy. I think Kurt said that about every knife on the table that doesn't have a deep carry clip. Dude, it's just neat. <laughs> there, or at least it needs an option an for option. a deep carry. <laughs> you yeah. know? But honestly, you can't really go wrong with this. I mean, it literally says demolition team on the knife. <laughs> like that's that's what the original LU or no, the UDT, the UDT yeah. was, it was for, for underwater demolition. Yep. And so these things are workhorses, even though it looks really fancy yeah. and nice. Cause it is. And, really the, fancy and, and this is the thing with this knife and, and a couple other knives on the table is I would have such a hard time 
I know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to mess like, that up. I think I think about when I was like a, like a concrete guy or a carpenter guy, and uh, I was making good money. Like I was, I was making really good money. Um, but still, like something like this, it's like eh, I'm gonna save that right. for when I actually do put on the collared shirt and a nice pair of shoes or whatever, and like right. with you know, like it's just it's such a nice night. But made in the United States, um, and I know a lot of guys, a lot of Leo, a lot of. Um, the guys that are deployed, they also carry the LUDT. Right. So again, just a just a workhorse of a knife um, comes in like what two sixty or something. Yep, two hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a sweet one. <laughs> uh, I just don't want to scratch it. Like, me either. <laughs> like even me putting it back, I was like, don't be careful. <laughs> don't scratch it. Um, <clears throat> all right. So next up, we have the Kershaw Link, as promised. Um, M390 blade, uh, aluminum handles, two-way reversible pocket clip, made in the USA, all the things we love about Kershaw. But here's the thing, guys. Let me say it one more time. M390 blade, $80. $80. It and is a sweet I think piece. in the best bang for your buck knives, we talked about this knife, and we said this is probably the best bang for your buck knife on the table. It's probably still the case. It's probably. It's, pro it's still on this it's table. It's a very close top contender. It's a very close top contender. Sure, there are little things we could tweak here or there. Um, for me personally, it's not the one I'd go for on the table, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but man, it is such a good knife for the money. Such yeah. a good knife for the money. And here's the thing. We've talked about kind of expensive knives. We talked about tools. We talked about less expensive knives. This thing I think falls like high end top of the middle, right? It's just I, like. I, no, I totally it's agree. It's just like you're not spending a lot of money and you're getting a lot of knife for it. Um, one thing I do like, and that I want to mention here, even though there are multiple knives on the table, is um, the comment you're reading, the description of a tool mm -hmm. knife, or right, yeah. is the one-handed capabilities. Yep. Now, I know a lot of people aren't assisted people, Me. like you, <laughs> but the assist on the on any of these knives, having the assisted, that's one thing that you need yeah. to consider when you're thinking, okay, I'm going to invest in a tool. Yep. What? Do do you want assisted? Do you right. want an auto? Something like that. I can totally close things. I can totally close an assisted knife one-handed. Am I gonna do it on camera? No, because I might cut myself. And you guys know the rule. We're just gonna keep rolling. I don't have to bleed all over the table. It's not a good thing. It's not a good look. <laughs> but uh, for me personally, I don't like having to think about closing the knife so much. Right? right. I want to be able to open it and close it. That's why I love the access lock so much. Yep. Compression locks. Um, but yeah. But the link's just an incredible knife. It, it really is. Cool. Over here, I have a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. These things are sweet, as most of our viewers know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, S30V steel. Um, you got the compression lock here, a four way reversible pocket clip, G10 scales. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. Like, it's I mean, when we're so amazing. When we're talking workhorse, this is a tried and true. It really is. All the way around. And you know, the thing is, is I, I actually forgot. And I apologize, guys. We're live, so it is what it is at this point. I was going to grab uh, an Osborne, a 940, Benchmade 940. Um, because really, I think that, that the 940 and the Para 2 are, sorry, the PM2. Pair of three. The PM2 are right in the same class, right? Like that was one thing that we heard from a lot of you guys when we were like, hey, tell us what knives you use at work. PM2, Osborne, right? Like right. time and time again, Benchmade, Benchmade 940 PM2. Um, and they're both just such classic workhorses, great steels. And the cool thing with the PM2 is that you can get it in a couple different steel variations, right? Right. Whether it's an exclusive or whether it's just a variation. And different scale colors and mm -hmm. stuff. Exactly. So Christmas hams. <laughs> Remember, I mean, this thing, I can get full purchase. I can choke up on it. All the things. This and this is amazing. Like we were talking about with the Hinder, you put your thumb on that ramp and oh, you yeah. are locked. It's like a seat belt. Like, like you're good, locked in. Really good luck getting that out of yeah. my hand. I've got good purchase on it. And like I said earlier, my Para 3 is, my M4 Para 3 is one of my go-to work knives. Um, you know, on my, you guys have seen my geo tracker once or twice in the uh, the videos here on HQ. But on the tracker, I was building the hard top for it. Right. And when I was building the hard top, that was the knife I did all my resin work and everything. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. This paramilitary two is 140 on the website. Grab them. Yeah. A um, couple more call outs here. We got Christian Long. He said his grandpa was a truck driver and carried a buck 110 until the day he passed away. If that isn't a work blade, I don't know what is. Christian, I'm right with you. Um, my Papa D, he was the truck driver. My dad was a truck driver, I was a truck driver, but my Papa D was a truck driver literally forever. Um, he carried a buck 110 and then like a little, I don't even know what it was, but it was some sort of like a case or something like that in his slip pocket. Slip joint. Yeah, like in his pocket as well. So you're right, that, that buck 110, 
Everyone in my family's had one since we were babies. So here, here's the thing is, my dad had a buck 110, but it was like always in its leather case clipped down yeah. and he'd slide it on his belt. That's what I imagine when I think truck driver on the road, right? buck 110, yeah. oh, in, uh, grandpa's, in the leather. Yeah, grandpa's was yep. in the leather on the belt for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, and then uh, Mike Arvig, uh, he said he got himself a Skalashnikov as a joke. And it's become one of his go-to knives. Yes, <laughs> yes. They really, those Kalashnikovs really are impressive. They're man. awesome, man. Um, all right, so we had a conversation about tools here, right? We had a conversation about price of tools. We had a conversation about quality of tools, but we can't talk about work knives without talking about the knife that is literally work knife. The Chris Reeve Sabenza. Sabenza translates to work. Um, so you guys know, this is CPM S35VN steel, uh, full titanium construction uh, with the Reeve integral lock bar. Uh, just the whole, all the details, everything made in Idaho, you know, aerospace tolerances. This thing's just killer, absolutely killer. And it was designed to work. I talked with Tim Reeve. So Tim Reeve is Chris Reeve's son. So I've talked to Tim Reeve at a couple of the trade shows and stuff. And he's got stories of like, oh yeah, like I just take my Sabenza and like, you know, uh, do the grip tape on my skateboard. <laughs> like, yeah, we'd go out to the cabin and just like chop up wood with them or whatever. And in my heart, this is a grill knife for me. I don't own one of these. In yeah. my heart, I'm like, no, little buddy, don't do it. But this... also that's what it was made for. It was designed for specifically to go to work. I'm sure even can... the name, even the name, it was designed <laughs> to go to work. I'm sure it can handle a lot of stuff, but there's no way if I have a Sabenza <laughs> in my pocket that I'm getting it out to tool with <laughs> my Sabenza. Criminy, that thing's staying in the pocket. Yeah. It's maybe cutting open some mail. Right, so again, when we're talking uh, when we're talking tools and we're talking, you know, uh, paying for a good tool, this is $450. So you get the full Chris Reeve uh, warranty, again, handmade in the United States and the tightest tolerances. When we talk pocket knives, any of the knives on the table, um, this isn't me hyping, this is an actual fact, this is the yardstick for pocket knives. Yeah. Literally, this is the thing that defines if a pocket knife is good or not good, um, kind of industry-wide. So, super great knife, it's a grill so knife of mine. Gorgeous. I'm with you, bro. I ain't, so I'm not gorgeous. cutting. I'm not cutting deck tape with my Sabenza. <laughs> but you should. That's the thing. I got a saying with most of my stuff, and it's destroy it to enjoy it, right? And and you should you know use what? your stuff. You should, but I don't know if I could do it. That's true, though. I, I, I mean, me with my barrage. That's exactly. I love it so much because I know it can take it. Exactly. <laughs> all right, guys. Up next on the table, we have. Oh, didn't quite get it all. <laughs> we have the Spider Co Pacific Salt in H1 steel. Um, H1. H1, it, man. It just Basically, doesn't corrode. It just doesn't rust. So this is on the table because if you're in a swampy area. <laughs> if you're in swamp. If you're in a swamp. Uh, no, but if, you're, but if you're in wet conditions and you, you're working a lot um, and you don't want to have to baby your pocket knife, we literally tested this thing in uh, the Great Salt Lake, which is way saltier than any ocean on earth, and we couldn't rust the blade. So. Yeah. Just a great knife. And what does it go for? Uh, this one is $88. $88. And it is on the website. On the website. I uh, When I was building gun ranges in Florida for a while, building a gun range. And I remember, we, speaking of swamps, we checked into the hotel and uh, the gal was like, okay, if there's any body of water, don't swim in it unless it's a pool. And we were like, okay, ha ha ha, like, you know, make fun Red of the tourists. I'm from Vegas. I'm from Las Vegas. So I'm like, yeah, make fun of the tourist thing, right? We walk outside and we're taking our bags out of the truck into the the hotel room, and there were literally three, I don't know, crocodile alligators, I don't, I'm from Vegas, I don't know, the crocodiles, uh, like in the front yard of this thing, just cruising around. Oh then we drove to gosh. work the next morning, and there's a crocodile crossing the road. We had to stop to let the crocodile cross the road. <laughs> and uh, I was actually carrying a D2 knife on that trip, and it actually did get, it did get a little bit of rust on it. I don't know why, but that terrified me. <laughs> but talking about crocodiles, look at this. Looks it like looks a crocodile. like a crocodile. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's funny. <laughs> All right, um, man, we gotta blow through some of these knives. Let's we're we're gonna run out of time here, guys. Let's do it. All right, so next up, we have got the Case Barlow. Now, some of you might be okay. looking and saying, Zach, why is there a traditional on the table? <laughs> I, don't know. I know Curtis. Um, and this is why, is when I was, when I was working construction, actually all growing up, um, I'm, I'm uh, spoiled in that I've, I've almost always had a locking knife. I love locking knives, but I've almost always carried an in-pocket knife as well. 
Um, and so for me, this is quintessential to a working knife. So you have a knife like this to pick out slivers because you know you didn't like just cut a sewer line with it or something. You have a knife like this to process food. You have a knife like this that's in your pocket. Of course, it's not gonna be pristine and clean and pretty, but you know you haven't used the blade to do anything really gnarly or crazy with. Right. Um, and so for me, I've always, and it's probably that truck driver cowboy background, but I've always carried a knife like this in my pocket um, while I'm at work. I actually, uh, just really quick, because we are gonna run out of time. Um, this was one of them for a long time. Grandpa Jensen did the old Grandpa Jensen special on that one. Yeah. And then uh, this this buck canoe pattern was one for a long time too. And when we talk about buying inexpensive knives so you can break them, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. But in, I think an in-pocket knife is very important. And I'll tell you right now, if I hadn't given up Victorinoxes because I thought they were kid knives, the compact would have been in my pocket the whole time. <laughs> Kurt's face, he doesn't believe me how good it is, but he'll find out. Um, so anyways, that case goes for $48.99 on the website. Um, but I, I just can't talk about work knives, at least from my personal experience, without talking about a good in-pocket knife that's kind of your backup blade. So Okay. And this one's pretty. Yeah. It's a Barlow. I actually... It's a Barlow. The, the design is classic. If you don't like a Barlow, then yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Up next, actually last but not least for me. For you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have the Leatherman Skeletool. Now, the Skeletool is really cool, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. <laughs> Get it on is, the site, yeah. check it out. $80, no big deal. It's a great one. But this right here, we have been getting in these Kydex sheaths, and they're form-fitted to a bunch of different varieties of uh, tools, yeah, they don't multi tools. Have, they don't have the surge yet, but they've got the Leatherman free, so I'm pretty excited. Right, <laughs> and it's it's kind of like a, it has the same kind of clip that maybe a lot of pistol holsters have. Um, it just snaps right in there, and it has this little screw with the buffer to uh, adjust the, the tension on it. Yeah, and these things are sweet. Think how handy that would be on your belt instead of like undoing the Velcro and the snap and zippers and yep. whatever else. Yep. I mean, you just pull it out and you just shove it back in. Yeah, so you guys know I enjoy the Leatherman Wave, another one right. I like. I destroyed that case in probably like five months. Um, yeah, and the it, nylon. Yeah, I'm gnarly on my stuff, you guys know this, but man, this is so cool. So we, they, we got them for a bunch of different multi-tools on the website, check them out. All right, speaking of multi-tools, last one on the table here. Um, this is the Gerber Center Drive. Now, the reason that this is here is I heard from a ton of you guys that the Center Drive is a great tool. Now, you guys heard my whole spiel about the Surge, trusting a tool because I've used it enough that I know I don't have to mess with it. And I've heard the same experiences for the Center Drive. So it's got the one hand opening from Gerber. It's got the uh, spring-loaded pliers. I actually have a great story about spring the spring-loaded Gerbers. That's um, so handy. You're, yeah, you're gonna have to wait. I got We got an update of my knife collection coming soon, so hold on. Um, but the, the real reason to buy the center drive is the center drive. So it's a built-in long, long range screwdriver and then it also has a bit kit that comes with it. And to be honest, this is, for any multi-tool I've used, this is superior. Like straight up facts, just the facts. Like I think this- For a be, screwdriver, for, absolutely. For a screwdriver, I think this would be superior. And a lot of you guys have asked me to carry this and give my feedback. So I am gonna start carrying one, give you guys my feedback after I've done a couple jobs with it. But I, I think the center drive screwdriver is awesome. Awesome. It's so awkward. We've all been there when you're <laughs> yeah. when you have your Leatherman or whatever multi tool and your screwdriver's on one side and you got a handful of the knife on the other side. Yep. <laughs> yeah, center drive. That's that's really it's, smart. it's pretty sweet. And that goes for 105 on the website. Whew. Guys, that was a lot of uh that was a lot of knives. But that's what WoW's all about. It's all about looking at as many knives as we can, having a good time, hanging out. And uh, now we come to the end, which is maybe one of the best parts of WoW. I mean, I wish I could participate. I know, I wish I could too. So as you guys know, WoW is brought to you by Wee Knives. Now, that doesn't tell us, that, that doesn't mean that they tell us what to put on the table. Um, as you can see, there's not a single Wee Knife on the table. Sure, there's a couple Civivis, but they just kind of fit the bill. What it means is that they give us rad knives to give away to you guys. And today, <sighs> We're giving away a Wii knife I've been lusting after. I like that one. This is the Wii knife NAR. So you got S35 VN blade. This has got a titanium handle. Now you might have heard me gush about this before, but this titanium does not feel like titanium. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of titanium blades just, or titanium handles. A little slippery sometimes for me. Right. Um, this has got some sort of finish. Feel that it's a texture. It's like almost, almost like a rubberized. It is. It's almost like a rubberized yeah. finish, um, and it feels so dang good. So, anyways. The Wienar, we're giving it away. We've got a link down in the description. Uh, if you're not seeing it, just hit refresh. 
And that link is good for about 30 minutes or so. And you guys can go over, fill out the form, be entered to win. We'll announce the winner tomorrow or, or Friday. I like its name. The, yeah. Nar. the Nar. I love it. Anyways, the it's a great one. Um, if you're not watching live, make sure to make a little note in your guys' calendar. We do this every single month, first Wednesday of the month, and we give away a knife every single time. Let us know what work knives you guys use. And uh, I think we're out. That's it. Catch you guys on the next one.